Hallelujah. The Lord is a way maker. That is who he is. Miracle worker. Yes, Father, we bless your holy name. I thank God for another day that I am able to bask in his presence and come before you with an encouragement for today in our 32nd day of 40 days of transformation. You made it to 32 days. Give God a high praise. Hallelujah. And I am excited. I've been telling people uh, in my conversations throughout the day about 40 days of transformation and giving them a little snippet of my little conversation with God on this is my husband's book and why you didn't tell him to do this and I got enough to do but God knows what we need and he knows that in order for me to be able to walk in the next that there is some transformation that needed to be done. And so I am always open and flexible and agile and pliable to what God wants to do with me because I want more of him. I want to be just like him. I want him to use me how he wants to use me. And when I think about the remnant that God is raising up in this end time, E-N-D time, I want to be a part of that remnant. And so I want my heart right. I want my mind right. I want my spirit right. I want to walk in the will of God. I want to do the will of God. I don't have time for no mess, no junk, no nothing else. God, all I want is you. And so I learn every day why he wanted me to do 40 days of transformation because I needed to be transformed. And so I pray that you are having a blessed time with me. And if it's just me by myself, I give God a high praise. Amen. And I count it a privilege to be able to bask in his word. Day 32, y'all, again, if you haven't gotten this book, it is in the corner of your screen. If you're looking at the um, YouTube um, version of this, Instagram may not be in the corner of your screen, but the link will be down below in the messages. You guys need to like, subscribe, and share 40 Days of Transformation so people can be blessed by the Lord, man. I don't want to hold any of this with me. I'm not about being spiritually overweight or spiritually diabetic because I'm hoarding all of God's word to myself and not helping anybody else. But we want the world to know they need to be transformed. Amen. And so day 32, and the title is God is for you. Hallelujah. What is Pastor A saying about this? He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? According to Romans 8, 31. When David saw Goliath, he knew God was with him and would help him slay that giant. He did not listen to negative advice from the elders or the warriors as they tried to stop him. They laughed and mocked him for his age and size, but David knew God was with him. And with the father by his side, he knew everything would be fine. Sometimes God would allow your position because it is a part of his will. If you seek advice from man before you seek him, God, that would mean that you are leaning on your own understanding and the knowledge of others. To do his will is to be obedient to his every word and seek after his direction. Seeking. Hallelujah. This requires a relationship. And how do you develop a relationship? Pastor A said, I'm glad you asked. You build relationship by spending quality time. Some people will have good advice, but if, but if it's not the will of God, you do not need to follow that advice. If it's contrary to the word, don't follow that advice. It is possible for good advice to take you out of the will of God. You may question the things that God has asked you to do and even think you have a better plan. Trust me, he said, your plan is not better. Amen. I tremble at the thought of how many times we choose to plan our way out, thinking we know what's best for us. Trust in God and stand strong or stand on your own. Listen at this and fall hard. Wow. Trust in God and stand firm. 
because God is with you or lean on your own understanding and fall hard. Whew. I can't, I, I can't, there is nothing else I need to say about that. If you truly understand that God is with you, he's with you in the valley, he's with you in your motor bar moments, he's with you when you go to the top of the mountain, he's with you in your frustration, he's with you in your temptation, he's with you when you make the wrong decision, God is with us. He is with you when you are in alignment. He's with you when you're talking gibberish. He's with you when you're praying the word of the Lord. He's with you at work when everyone seems against you. He's with you when your name is being dragged through the mud. He is with you when your business is not, is not succeeding. He's with you when your children are acting a fool. God is with us. And if we understood how he is with us and be, you know why and how I know he's with us because scripture says that he will never leave nor forsake us. Never is forever. Ha! Never is forever. He will never leave nor forsake us. While we were yet sinners, the Bible declared Jesus loved us. And he died for us. And so you need to understand that God is with you. And because he is with you through everything, it is imperative that we work on our relationship with him. How do you build relationship with Christ? You got to spend time with him and in his word and allow the word of the Lord to become alive to you. And how does it become alive to you? You apply it to your life. Alive means application. And God is already with you, but he is not going to apply himself to your life. <laughs> He said, I stand at the door knocking. If you would let me in, I'll come and make an abode with you. That means I will come and eat with you. I'll come and sup with you. He said, but, but in order for him to come and sup with you and eat with you, you got to open the door. And so opening the door to Christ is the first step of application. Then you got to open his word. And when you open his word and you read those words that, that he is saying to you out of the word of the Lord and you apply it to your life, now you are building relationship. Father, you told me not to lean onto my own understanding, but acknowledge you in all of my ways and you would direct my path. So God, they are offering me this job and yes, it is paying more money, but I don't know if this is you or not. Can you confirm to me if this is you? Because he said that the blessing of the Lord make us rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Okay, and so the job is paying you $20,000 more. Well, that is a blessing and it is making you $20,000 more rich, but is it sorrow to it? The sorrow in it is that you got to move and then you got to work six days a week. And guess what? You won't be able to go to worship the way that you do and you won't be able to do your ministry the way that you do because you just got this huge promotion because the blessing of the Lord make you rich. But if there is sorrow to it, then it is not the blessing from the Lord. It is the lust of this world. Hallelujah. To, to, to gain more financially, to gain more, more uh, of, of aptitude in your aptitude in your company, to gain more pride about yourself because you've been promoted. But the blessing of the Lord is not on it if it brings you drama. If it brings you sorrow. It is not a blessing from the Lord. Hmm. Know that God is with you. And understand that everything that's good is not him. My husband says it wonderful. Everything that is good is not God. And so just when you think, wow, I had a good idea. And had he come shutting it down. Uh-uh. The Lord showed me I would never send you a man that will shut you down. I sent you a man that is responsible. 
I sent you a husband that will lead you. I sent you a husband that will guide you. I sent you a husband that will listen and wait before he responds. He will pray before he responds and he understands that everything that looks good and feels good is not me. I sent you a man that will pray before he go out there and make the wrong decision because ultimately he understands that he's responsible for your household. And so God, it seems like sometimes he shuts our plans down. But I give praise and honor and glory to him for shutting some things down that I wanted to do because it wasn't his will. And it would have brought sorrow to my life. So you got to understand when God is with you, every day is not going to be peaches and cream where he say yes to everything that you want. Because everything that you want is not the will of God for your life. But he will give you everything that you need. And the Bible says it like this, that he is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above all that you can ever ask or think. That is his will for your life. But you got to get in alignment. You got to build relationship. You got to be able to hear his voice. You got to be able to slow down and don't respond so quickly. But wait and hear what the Lord is saying. And if you got to make a decision, God knows that you have to make a decision. But he will not be threatened by time. He is time. What is time to God? And so if somebody is waiting on a decision and you have to make it right now, then maybe that's not the one, that's not the thing for you to do. Because nobody will tell God when to make a decision. He will always walk you into your season right on time. So don't be dismayed if you missed it. If you just didn't know, if you didn't hear God yet, don't be upset. His perfect will is being done in your life, but you got to trust him and you got to know that he's with you. Declare these things with me. My eyes have not seen my God, nor my ears have heard what God has in store for me. But I will stand on his word, trust in his plan for my life. And I declare that I am victorious in Jesus' name. I want to declare that again because I felt something in that. My eyes have not seen. This is the word of the Lord, y'all. This is the word of the Lord that we are declaring. My eyes have not seen, nor have my ears heard what God has in store for me. That means I don't even understand. I can't even articulate what it is that he has. It's so big that I can't even articulate it. I would never dream of it. Huh. My eyes have not seen, nor have my ears heard what God has in store for me. But I will stand on his word and trust his plan for my life and i declare that i am victorious in jesus name will you trust god's plan for your life i guarantee you it's better than your plan <laughs> hmm. we're gonna bask in first thessalonians 5 and 18 today and it declares give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Because this is the will of God. God doesn't want us complaining, murmuring, getting upset, emotional, saying things we don't mean that we're going to have to repent for. He wants us to give him thanks in all circumstances in all it doesn't mean that you're thanking him because you don't feel good father i thank you that i don't feel good today it doesn't mean that it just means that you know that he is bigger than what your circumstance is and so father even though i don't feel good today you are bigger than my circumstance jesus took the stripes on his back that I might walk in healing. So I thank you for my healing. 
Father, my sinuses are draining and I can't even hear myself talk, but I give you praise because Jesus Christ died for my infirmities. Hallelujah. Does it mean that you're happy that you don't have what you want, but you know that God is greater? And so in all things, in all circumstances, give the Lord thanks. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor today. I worship you, God. I bless your holy name because you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy to be exalted and lifted up, Father. In fact, you said if you be lifted up that you will draw all men unto you. And so, Father, I lift you up today. I lift your name on high. I praise you because you are God. I praise you because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father. And I give your name praise that you've allowed us another day to come into your presence, Father, to worship you because your word declares that we were created to worship you. And so, Father, I thank you. I give you glory and honor and praise. I thank you, God, that you are with us. Your word promised that you would never leave nor forsake us. You said when our mother forsake us, you'd be a mother to us. You'd be a father and a sister and a brother to us. God, you said that you call us friend. You said that you would never leave nor forsake us. You said that your word is like a lamp unto our feet, Father God, and a light unto our path, Father. You said, Lord God, that you wish above all that we prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. You said that you intercede for us on a daily basis basis, oh God. And so we praise you, Father, for all the ways that you are with us. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, God, that you are with us. I praise you, Father. You said that if you didn't go back, that you couldn't meet, that you couldn't send the Holy Spirit that will bring us into remembrance of all the things that you've said and lead us and guide us into all truth. And so, Father, you went to prepare a place for us. But you sent the Holy Ghost, Father God, that will be our teacher. Father, again, this shows us that you are with us. And so I praise you for being with us today, Father. I thank you, Lord, for never leaving us, never forsaking us. And even when we feel like we can't trace you down, Father God, you are right there with us. And so, Father, I pray for your people today that doesn't think that you're with them. They don't think that you see them. They don't think that you feel them. They don't think that you hear them. Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, will touch their hearts, Father. I pray that you will light that candle, God, so that they, so that the fire of God might burn on the inside of them once again. Hallelujah, Jesus, I praise you. I give you glory, I give you praise. And I give you honor. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ that we praise him, we thank him, and we love him. Go in peace today and understand that God is with you. He is never, ever leaving you. Even when you walk away, even if you have backslidden, God has never and will never change his mind about you. He will never change his position about you, but he will stand flat footed like a tree planted in the rivers of water and wait for you to return to him. Hallelujah. He has not forgotten you. He will never give up on you and he is always with you. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord and we will see you tomorrow, God willing. Amen. Hallelujah.